Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of HBCU Conversations. Pretty big story that hit us right before the weekend and joining us to shed a little more light on this story. So what we have here is we have two former HBCU student athletes, one current HBCU student athlete. They have filed what is becoming a class action lawsuit against the NCAA. Uh, Beth Fagan joining us now. She's the lead attorney on this case. Beth, thank you for your time. And when, when it comes to the law and when it comes to lawsuits, sometimes we need we need to break it down to layman's terms. Um, but give us a little background here. Um, how did this case end up in your office and, and you decided to take this on? As I understand, you do have a history um, with the NCAA. We do. We have a history of focusing on wrongs by the NCAA against student athletes. And what we've been watching for a while is the intentional discrimination that the academic programs that the NCAA has in place um, imposes on black student athletes. And given where our society is now and with 10 years of data behind this program that shows that, in fact, the academic programs uh, that the NCAA has do discriminate against black student athletes, we felt it was important to file the lawsuit. Now we have covered APR uh, and the APR report every year. It, it has almost crippled some HBCUs to the standpoint of their ability to compete in the postseason. And as journalists, we see it and we're like, mm, you know, there, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but, but the schools that we cover tend to be at, at the top of this list. Um, what did it take to go back and, and do the research and provide the context um, for the, the legal basis of, of your case and, and the suit that you guys are bringing forward? Working with consultants, we went back and pulled the data and tracked the teams that have been impacted by the APR program. And what we learned is that 43, uh, an HBCU team is 43 times more likely to be penalized and prevented from, from participating in the postseason ban. And in fact, our clients went to Savannah State University who dropped from division one to division two, citing in part the APR penalties and the inability to compete on the, uh, given these bans that are occurring. It has a very real effect on the revenues that HBCUs bring in. And that ultimately trickles down to the educational resources that it has for these black student athletes. What, what would be a win in this case? I, I know when you guys filed it, it was a 58 page document. Um, you are, are seeking a, a jury trial, according to the filing. Um, what are you are you ultimately looking for uh, policy changes or are, are you looking for for compensation for people who would join this class action lawsuit? Like what would be an ultimate win in this case? An ultimate win here is both the dismantling of the APR system, as well as compensation for those black student athletes that were on teams at HBCUs that had that were penalized. Uh, when people look at this, uh, just a common man like me, we're going to say, wow, uh, the NCAA is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate, giant corporation, or whatever you want to call it. You know, it, it's it's the old tired cliche, you know, David and Goliath. Um, do you, how how strongly uh, do you feel about your chances and the case going up against someone as big as the NCAA? Certainly the NCAA doesn't scare us. We feel very good about it. When any organization engages in intentional discrimination, you know, we feel 100 percent that we are in the right and that the practice that results in that discrimination should be stopped. So you have a class action lawsuit. Um, if I read it correctly, um, you know, people who find themselves, you know, a student athlete from, is it 2010 and moving forward that it might have been on a team that was sanctioned by the APR can join uh, this case. What, how does that work if someone says, oh, hey, that's me? If it's them, they can certainly contact us. But even if people don't contact us, we intend to move forward and represent all of the people that were on those teams and will ultimately reach out to provide notice through the court system of any rights that they have. As this moves along, what happens next? What is the next thing that, that people should look out for if they decide to follow this case closely? The NCAA has to answer for its wrongs. So the NCAA will be served with the lawsuit and will have to come in and give an explanation as to either why it thinks it didn't discriminate or why if it did discriminate that there's really no other way for it to attempt to raise academic progress rates at HBCUs. And when they answer uh, the case, is it then gonna be up to 
a judge to decide if this moves forward? Like, what? how does that part of the legal process work? That's right. So the, uh, the NCAA could come in and try to move to dismiss the case and say it isn't discriminating. The judge would then have to decide if the case could move forward. And then after that, the court will decide whether we can move forward as a class action. And for us, that's a, a big part of the case is to make sure that those Black student athletes who were affected are compensated, and as well as current student athletes aren't impacted going forward by the program. What type of time frame um, do these sort of things unfold uh, when it comes to being heard, deciding if it would move forward? Like, what type of window do you think you're looking at? These cases potentially take years, but we are hoping here that the NCAA will step back and take a fine look at the data. The data doesn't lie. The NCAA could have a real impact by making change sooner than later, and we're hoping that by bringing this lawsuit, it will cause the NCAA to stand up and do the right thing sooner. We're talking to Beth Fagan. She's the lead attorney with this lawsuit against the NCAA. How, how did this end up in your office? You have, you have two former basketball players at Savannah State. Uh, one thing that I find very, you know, for me personally, I, I just thought it was very brave and bold. A current student athlete on the women's lacrosse team at, at Howard comes forward, uh, which uh, I, I imagine is, was a vulnerable moment for her still being a student athlete enrolled in school. Um, how, how did this come to your attention? You know, a group of student athletes did approach us and brought the issue to our attention. And, you know, there's a network of student athletes and frankly, athletes at large that are realizing that of the voice, the impact of their voices and how to start using those voices to affect change. And, you know, our current student athlete feels very strongly that she has a position of power and can use that voice to make change in a time when, um, you know, maybe protests aren't doing what everything that needs to be done or certainly can be done in conjunction with using uh, the, the law to make change. And so um, it is courageous and it is brave, but they are doing it absolutely from, from the right place and with the tools of the law behind them. You, you mentioned earlier, and obviously everyone is aware that this is a time in our country where, where people are taking a closer look uh, at racial discrepancy, uh, injustices, what have you. Uh, how big would this be if you guys were to win this case? When, when you look at the context of, of, of change in America, you know, from 40 years ago to, to now, how big of a win could this potentially be for HBCUs uh, in the context of the, how they fit into the NCAA? I think that this could be a huge win for HBCUs and for black student athletes. What we find in the data is that black student athletes are at a disadvantage, whether they're at HBCUs or at predominantly white institutions. The data doesn't lie and it's time that we start looking at that and working with the NCAA to make change in a way that's going to benefit student athletes and not just give lip service to the idea that, that we are doing what's right by our athletes. All right. Beth Fagan, thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a great weekend and thank we will definitely continue to follow this story closely. The lawsuit against the NCAA. Thank you again, Beth. Thank you.